Floss Tube. I'm Nicole and this is Dee Dee's Floss Tube number 24. <laughs> Okay, so welcome back to the channel everybody if you're a returning subscriber welcome back thank you very much for joining me again I really do appreciate you being here every week with me and leaving me comments down below and and giving me tips and tricks for uh, along the way and if you're new here welcome this is a video all about cross stitch uh, although I am a multi craft channel and I do cover things like quilting sewing and general crafting anything that I really want to have a go at um, I sort of document my journey here and take you along for the ride. I also have uh, weekly tutorials, although one didn't go up this week because I've had a sick little one this week. So um, time just didn't allow me to do that as family always comes first. So if you are new here and it's something that you would like to uh, partake in, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it. And then that way you won't miss out on any of my future uploads. All right, so we're going to get straight in it, into it today. I've got a fair bit of work on after this video. So I've got some quilts to load up and I've got some people coming to drop some stuff off. And yeah, and just some planning to do because we've got a retreat in less than about seven weeks time. So not long at all. So we've got to start preparing for that as well. All right, so a little bit of, I cover a little bit of life stuff for those that are new here and then not much has happened in my life this week except for lack of sleep and a sick four-year-old. Um, last Thursday she afternoon, she started to feel a bit off, like she was just a little bit moody and then uh, middle of the night she woke up and she wasn't too well. She had a high temperature and pretty much that's the way she stayed until yesterday. So yesterday I took the day off and actually caught up on some much needed sleep because I, I just, I cannot function on a couple of hours of sleep and especially broken sleep at that. So, but she is all better. She's back at daycare. She's loving that she's seeing her friends again. So all is happy on the Mia front. Um, Mima has finally caught up on some sleep and uh, caught up on some things that I needed to get out um, via email and stuff like that. So that's all been caught up on now. Thank goodness for that. Other than that, not much else has happened. We've started back at dancing. So the craziness is that is my life of chauffeuring my dancing queen around is back into full swing again. She's very excited. She's starting a few new dances this year. Uh, she's gone up to Demi Point. Um, she's gone up to seniors as well. So it's all happening for the Divine Miss N, as I like to call her. And uh, Savannah, well, Savannah's just reading books and doing her thing and planning to go to the movies and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, so not a lot on the home front has really happened and my husband's just been working away. So, yeah, so we're going to get stuck straight into the cross stitch today. Um, I don't have any finishes this week, mainly because I didn't really get as much time as I normally would get on the weekend to stitch because I was snuggling with little M. Um... But I did manage to get the things that I wanted to get done. So, example, homework, um, new starts, any sales that I've started and all the rest of it. So I've got all of my um, notes here and we're going to go through them. So we're going to start with whips to begin with. And last Wednesday was the 29th of um, January and with Virtual Stitches we are doing a new start on the 29th to celebrate the Leap Day, Leap Year. Um, I'm not going to do a new start on the 29th of every month. I'm actually going to work on this particular project that I started and you can see the picture here. Um, so I made a good start on that. It's pina colada or it's called Shake and Not Stir but it's the pina colada recipe and I have been in trouble for people just now having that song in their head. Um, <laughs> so I'm sorry for that but I made a good start on it and it is on black as you can see and I started down on the glass so I think that's yep that's the right way so I um and yes it is in a Q-snap and this is probably the only thing that I would use a Q-snap for um or a hoop uh, a hoop sorry um is because it's on black so a lot of people have trouble with black and stitching on it I do not I actually enjoy stitching on black but I have a few tips and tricks that I um, use for it so one is to have it in a Q-snap or a hoop um, the other one is I actually have my I don't have my light directly over it 
Um, I actually have it behind it and I have a piece of white paper. Um, and I've sent a picture, I sent a picture to Tia in Virtual Stitches because she, she's stitching on black. So, um, and she said, you know, it's hard to do it at night. Well, I only get to stitch at night. So this is the only time that I actually stitch on this is at night time. So I do have good overhead lights. Um, as you can see now, this is quite lit up. This has got my studio light here. So I do have that on and that's off to the side of me. But when I'm stitching, I have my little lamp and I have it sitting behind. And because I'm stitching on, um, this is 14 count Ada that I'm stitching on as well. You can actually, with a white piece of paper behind it, the light reflects off that and comes through the holes. So it makes it really easy to see the holes. And that's how I stitch on my black. And that doesn't matter whether it's uh, 14 count or whether it's 28 count. As you're getting higher up into the linens and stuff like that, it doesn't shine through as much but it still does the same thing so that's what i've been doing for my black so if you like like the look of stitching on black but you've been avoiding it because you think that you're not going to be able to see or you've struggled with it in the past try that just have the the light sitting behind you as opposed to directly over it and have a good overhead light off to the side so you don't get any glare because it actually gives a little bit of a glare um, at times don't know if that's with all fabrics, but this is this particular fabric, which is a 14 count. And then just have a white sheet of paper or if you're um, stitching uh, on, on your lounge chair or something like that, have a white blanket or a piece of fabric or something like that, just so the light can hit that and reflect off it. Um, I'll try and set it up on a stand and get a really good um, video of it so I can show you next week and I can insert that into what it looks like and how I stitch on it just to, to show you so that may be some um, tips and tricks that you might like to to see for stitching on black so I made a good dent on that I think I got a hundred and I didn't write it down but um, I think I got 190 stitches in that um, because that was on the 29th and I had a big day that was the Wednesday night and I had a big day the next day so um, I just wanted to get his, get a new start. Done a little bit of stitching with the virtual stitches when we started it, but I'm going to work on this on the 29th of each month, and that's going to be my leap year. And as as you can see, it's got the full recipe for the pina colada. It is also getting some stitches for this week's homework as well, um, because it actually fits a couple of the prompts from this week. So you'll get to see that again next week with some more progress on it. All right, and then I started doing my homework. Now, we only had a short week last week for homework um, because the first was on, the first of February was on Saturday. Excuse me. So we had to have our homework finished by Friday. So they in the School of Magical Stitches, and for those that are new here, this year I uh, joined a challenge group called School of Magical Stitches and Literature. And basically, <coughs> excuse me, they are working off the Disney book. So um, all the prompts sort of come from that. Last week they did it a little bit different. They had four different prompts. Um, prior to the wheel being, they were going to spin a wheel for each of the clubs. Um, so there's Boardwalk, Beach Club, Wilderness and Glen, uh, Grand Floridian, I think it's pronounced. Um, I'm in Beach Club. So there was four different prompts to choose from. Okay, but we didn't get to do the choosing. The headmistress got to do the choosing. So she had a wheel, she spun it, and um, each group um, got a prompt to work on. And it was through the process of elimination, and we went first, and the wheel was spun, and we got Halloween. So um, the prompt was something that you would dress up in um, for Halloween, and I said, well, I would go as a witch, so I would... Um, have a witch's hat which um was in my halloween quaker so you can see the picture um just above there and i made a really good thing in it and i also used this for um another prompt as well we had a pop-up where we had to get um, as many stitches as we could in and if we got to a certain point we got bonus stitches for another um team building um challenge that we've got going on and so basically, yes, the Halloween Quaker got a few stitches in it indeed. So I got 300 stitches in for homework and that gave me the witch's hat and part of this one down here and this up here. Um, and then for the team building one, I done 600 and, uh, sorry, 
363 and that completed this motif down here so i got a good 600 stitches in this this week so i was really happy that i've got that and the new homework has come out this week and also the extra credit for february so i'm going to be slotting this in where i can for that so i think i've got it in for one prompt um, for homework this week and then i've got it in for three of the prompts in um, extra credit which are the monthly long challenges so the, by the end of the month if i don't use it for anything else i should end up with about another 1200 stitches in this so that will see the page finished i think i've still got about 800 stitches to go for a page finish and then um i'll be starting on page two or three depending which way i go down all right so that's that one and I'm loving it. Like, I'm just loving working on it. It is just my so much of a favourite piece at the moment. I just, it's so, it's like, believe it or not, it's actually, like, it looks quite complicated, but it is such a quick stitch. Like, because it's a lot of repetitive stuff, so like you can see in that big motif, it's just repeating the, this one section and it's making the circle. This one was just the flowers. These two flowers are exactly the same. So once you've stitched one, you sort of, you, you can just sort of glance at the chart and all the rest of it. And then you've got the border around it. Now in the past, I've had issues with borders. So basically um, I done the top part of the border and came down to here and then left it at that, then done the fill in and then done my border because in the past with borders on other projects i've had some issues where i've miscounted and stuff like that haven't miscounted the chart it's just been the border i've come in too close or something like that and i'm loving the fact that we're starting to get some color in it now so the purple and we've got some orange and all the colors for this are just absolutely gorgeous we've got some light pink and we've got some um what looks like yellow but it's actually a green which is called frog, frog legs um, so yeah, and we've got some different grades of, of shades of black. So, and they're all using um, fancy flosses. So uh, I think that all of them are actually classic color works. I think there's a couple of weeks dye works in there as well, but I'm just loving it. I love it and I can't wait to finish it. So hopefully I can slot it into a couple of other homework ones not just the extra credit because I've slotted it as I said I've slotted it in for three um extra credit so that and they're all 300 stitches each so that will get a good chunk of stitches in so I'm happy with that because it's actually going to get me a page finish on that one all right so <clears throat> um so that was like over 600 stitches I got into that one and then the weekend rolled around and of course I um, finished off doing whatever I had to do on that one and then I uh, worked on Hubble Bubble and you can see the picture just here and um, I didn't get as much as I wanted to get done on this one. Um, I woke up on Sunday and I was pretty tired and there was another sale going on for um, in virtual stitches called um, Cinnamon Stars by Plum Street Samplers and so I've, I've got that as a, whip, a current whip at the moment I started doing that um, at the end of last year so I pulled that out as well so the first in I think it was about 10 o'clock I finally got going for the morning because I'd had hardly any sleep whatsoever um, and I thought oh I'll just give a few stitches in that to get it going so last time um you would have seen this which was quite some time ago i had just started on the um chimney and i think three rows of the roof so on the weekend i i think i got uh 300 stitches into this one 290 something along that line those lines um i did count the stitches i didn't have to count the stitches for this one because it was a sow so i double dipped this one and added those stitches to Cinderella's castle in um, in School of Magical Stitches. So I was doing the sow and then I also am doing the embroidery.com um, cross stitch and hand embroidery challenge of doing an hour of stitching a day and posting a picture up each day. Um, so I joined that late January. Uh, Lisa from Shady Trees was telling me about it and um yeah so basically i joined that so this was um i took a, a picture of that and used it as well so you can see there that i've started coming down i don't know if it's picking too well up on camera but you can see i've started to come down in the first wall and i got part of the roof done as well so i'm pretty happy with that 
The variegation is very subtle on the roof. I don't know if it's picking up on camera or not, but um, I'm really loving it and I can't wait to finish it. I've got a massive piece of fabric here too, so I'll be able to use some of that um, fabric when I'm finished for ornaments and whatnot. And I'm stitching this on um, 28 count tea dye. I didn't tea dye it. That's just the color that I purchased. And I got that from 123 Stitch. Um, I think it's a DMC from memory. The label's long gone, but I know it's 28 count because I wrote it down in my diary and um, what it's called. So that's come out to play a bit and with, they're doing a bit of a month, that's a month long thing. So um, I'm going to actually get some more stitches in this because I'm pretty keen to get this one um, sorted as well. And um, But it's not my focus piece, but I'll try and use it wherever I can. So that was Sunday morning and I did a couple, as I said, I did a couple of hours on that. Um, when I posted it up in the, um, the embroidery.com challenge, uh, a lady commented on there because um, I put a beginning, like start and finish um, picture. And I only spent about an hour and a half, maybe two hours tops on it. And as I said, I got about 290, 290 stitches in it. Um, and it was an hour and a half, sorry, that I spent on it. Um, but it was so quick to, because it was just going backwards and forwards. So it was super quick to stitch. And because I stitched in hand, it makes it really fast. Um, and she said, gee, you're a quick stitcher. And I'm like, really? I thought I was slow. But um, this one, I suppose, because it wasn't in the hoop or anything like that, I was just stitching it really quickly in hand. Um, it went really, really quick. So that makes a big difference. Okay, so the next one I worked on for Sunday was my Haid. And I didn't get as many stitches as I wanted into this one. I think I got about 500, a little over 500 stitches in. Um, so it was still really good progress. And um, so as you can see, there's the before picture of when I started. And then this is what I got done on the weekend. So I'm sort of still just using the um, colors. Believe it or not, there's actually four colors in that one. Uh, there's a gray, a greeny blue sorry a greeny gray and then there's two shades of blue and a, a a light gray in that so it's coming along really well um i still have maybe three rows to go four rows across before i'm i'm getting onto the next page and i've got about three to go three or four to go down um as i said i didn't get as many stitches in that one as i would have liked to um get in it i just wasn't feeling up to stitching for like doing a long session so I sort of broke the day the Sunday up and done cinnamon stars in the morning then had a bit of a nap when Mia had a nap because we hadn't had much sleep the night before because of her high temperature and all the rest of it and she was still really miserable on Sunday um and then so once she went to bed on um Sunday night which was about 6 30 6 o'clock something like that um I put her to bed nice and early and I sort of come out and I just done a little bit of um, stitching with virtual stitches and um, I ended up putting, I was going to chuck it in and go to bed at um, 400 and something and I think I was like 10 or 15 stitches off going over the 500. So I ended up doing about 507 stitches in it and um, so I was happy with that. It still was a, a decent chunk. I would have liked to have got seven or even 800 stitches in it but I was happy with 500 so it's coming along really nicely um they're not short-term projects so i don't you know a progress is progress on that and it takes as it takes what it takes and as i'm alternating between the two so one one week i'm doing hubba bubble the next week i'm doing autumn queen so this coming sunday um the kids are all going out Mia and I are staying home and they're all going to watch a movie because they want to go and see a new um, a new release. I think it's Birds of Prey that they're going to see. So they're all going over to Toowoomba with Brendan to see that and I'm just going to hang at home with Mia. So her and I will just sit, she'll colour in and I'll sit here and stitch and do all that sort of stuff. So in Autumn Queen, I should get a really good amount of stitches in. All right, so that was um, my Sunday, which was a somewhat relaxing day because, as I said, we had a little sick one. And so then Monday rolled around. Um, there was also a, a red Gina's Red Dress sale and Virtual Stitches was starting up this week as well. And homework was released on Sunday for this coming week. So once that was released, I was going to um, try and squeeze in a few stitches into the Red Dress sale. But I decided to hold off once the homework came out because I could actually use it 
for um, some of the homework. So um, I ended up starting it on Monday and putting a few stitches in. I ended up doing um, a little over 200 stitches in this one and you can see from the picture that's what it's going to look like it's not normally something that i would do um, and i couldn't decide so i put up a um, post in virtual stitches and let everybody else decide it um, so they chose chart two um, which was this one here and um, i made a start on it and i've done two of the prompts for this week's homework but i'm actually going to get some more into this as well so i think this one's got like it's got a few um fancy stitches and stuff like that and i think they're called quarter stitches that are in it um where they're just like half the square like a, a like you've got the square for your cross but it's only half and it's got a little leg I don't know, three quarters maybe i don't know but anyway you can see one of them here this is the start that i've made um and you can see one of them there so the prompt for homework was to stitch something that um has beads on it and i don't have anything that has beads on it. i do have a little mill hill um pack there but I didn't want to start that it's a Christmas charm I'm going to leave that to a little bit later in the year so this one actually I lucked out with this one and that's why I didn't end up starting it on the Sunday because it actually had beads in it and that was one of the prompts so I had to stitch 100 um, stitches for the beads and I then had to stitch some the you had to choose between um, blue or red and your color had to, your color name had to have the word red in it um, or they gave you a list of other ones that it could have had in it. So you had to do 100 stitches for that. So that's a little over 200 stitches in that. And that's sort of going up um, her dress at the moment and sort of coming down. And all those white spots that you can see in there, um, they have little gold um, cry neck in it. I think that's how you pronounce it. And then this little white X that you can see there, I'll get a bit closer that is going to be white stitched in white and then in the center of it it will have a gold bead um and there's several of those over her dress as you can see from the chart so i'm pretty happy about that and um yeah i love my needle i love my needle minder on this one this is one of my favorite and it pretty much summed up my monday um i'll have a cafe um, mocha vodka valium latte to go so yeah, I can't remember where I got that. I think I got that from Gina's Unique um, Needle Minders. So I'm going to put some more stitches into that because I'm actually really enjoying doing that and doing the, the different stitches and all, all that on that. So yeah, um, and then I have set down Tuesday. So I've done a little bit more structuring to my week and to my month. Extra credit came out on the weekend, so we've got the whole month of extra credit and I think there's four or five prompts, so we have to watch a movie um then there's four prompts that we have to stitch and then um there's also a book that we're reading as well which is called the fairest of all it's about the the queen so it's the villains one this month so um one of the prompts was find something that I uh, stitch on something that you would find in a royal castle and I'm like racking my brain racking my brain and I knew that I had um game of uh yeah game of swans there and i just thought no i'm just not gonna i don't want to start that because that is a big piece and i didn't have the fabric here for it anyway and then i'm looking through my whips and i realized that i had prairie schooler where there are bees and you can see the chart there and i thought well that's got a crown in it so i'll just stitch on that so that's what i did and that was what i did last night so um when i started last night i done i had done all the words in this border and this Bit of the border here so i um stitched in this part here and all of the b and the border around it and i'm happy to say that i didn't have to frog anything out and i also got to stitch on the the crown which we don't have to do we don't have to stitch on the actual thing the chart just has to have um the prompt in there so i'm pretty excited that that got some loving and um i'll probably to this afternoon i've got a um wait for narrowly so i might take this with me and put the wings in and, and finish the yellow up and all the rest of it so i've got all the gray done and the the blue um i'm not using the called for dmc in this one i'm actually using um wix dye works uh, i'm using queen bee for the yellow i'm using um graphite for the i think it's graphite for the um the gray and I'm using the called for DMC color and I'm using, I cannot remember the variegated name for that one. But once um, 
I'm finished this I will um, have all that and I'm going to start doing some blog posts of when I'm finished them so you can see what all the uh, called for colors are and all what I swapped them out for because I've got a lot of weeks dye works I've just been substituting some of them especially with um, things like the prairie school this one here um, it was very easy just to swap out. I just looked at the cover and seen what they had in there. The grey is probably a little bit lighter than the called for DMC, but I'm happy with that. It's got a nice subtle variegation in it, so it's not too wishy-washy, if that makes any sense. So, like, it doesn't go from a dark to a real light. It's just a subtle um, variation, the sort of between a medium to a light grey. And you can probably not see it too well, on camera but up in the border you can sort of see a, a slight gradient in color and i'm happy with that so that got some love this week and i'm pretty um pretty excited to to actually probably make this a bit of a feature piece because i've had this going for i started this in october i think of last year and i got the border and the words done and that was pretty much it so i'd um like to get a little bit more more done on it and i was quite surprised and how quick that stitched up last night because I actually ended up doing over 400 stitches in a couple of hours um, about three and a half hours I did last night and I did well over 400 stitches um, so I was pretty happy with that so if I can do that every now and again this is going to be done pretty quick so and and like you wouldn't think that there's over 400 stitches just in the this section here but there is and I really, I, I had a different blue picked out. I had a, a Cosmo blue picked out and it was a little bit brighter, but I'm happy that I changed it to the actual cord for color um, in the end because the while the, the lighter blue looked really good with it, um, that just sets it off. That's more in tone with the other colors. So yeah, so I'm happy with that one as well. All right, so that is everything that I um, stitched on for the week. As I said, I didn't get as many stitches in. I mean, yesterday she was fine. I had a rest day yesterday, so I sat there for a couple of hours um, last night. I think I, I stitched from about 6, 6.30, um, got dinner out of the way and all the rest of it. She was sitting in there. She'd had a shower. She was just relaxing, um, watching a bit of TV. So I came out here and done a little bit of stitching because, I mean, after the week of having her home and hearing those cartoon tunes again were doing my head in. So I come out here and done a little bit of stitching and then I had to go and get Neroli from dancing and run around and do a bit of shopping and all that sort of stuff. So by the time I finished stitching, I think it was about quarter to, to ten, but it totaled up to about three hours, um, three and a half hours, something along those lines. So as I said, that is all I stitched on for this week, which was pretty good. Um, this is going to be something that I do in the first week of each month, um, just to give you an idea of how long I spend on stitching. Um, and again, I only do this at night. Um, there was a couple of days there where we had public holidays and stuff like that through um, in January where I stitched during the day, but predominantly I only stitch at night. Uh, I tend to get the kids dinner done and then have them all the, the older girls take care of themselves. I don't have to worry about them. I just tell them that they've got to be in by, by bed by a particular time and they'll just do their showers and all the rest of it. Um, dinner's usually done fairly early because we've got Mia and she sort of governs when we eat. And um, so I sort of start stitching anywhere from 6 to 6.30 to maybe 7 o'clock and then I'll stitch for two and a half. I set down two hours every night. Most nights I stitch two to three hours. Um, so I done a total, like because I've been counting stitches, I decided at the beginning of January that I was just going to write down everything that I worked on on a calendar. Um, and I'm using the the 24 hours of cross stitch um, planner on Etsy. And I think I forgot to put that link up last week. So I do apologize for that. So, um, and I've just been printing them off and just putting them in a folder like this. I've got some div um, dividers. I'm actually going to do a tutorial on how to make a cover for this. So you've got some pockets and all that sort of stuff. That's coming up in the, in the next couple of weeks. Um, as I said, my, my filming schedule has been put back. Um, I was hoping to be filming this week, um, but just, and a part of last week, but with her being sick i just didn't get to it so um 
I basically just printed the pages off and you can see here that I've just filled in everything that I've worked on. Um, I actually planned my month out a little bit so extra credit goes in there and I just sort of put it anywhere and then um, on set days I like to um, focus like Saturday mornings or Saturday afternoons I like to because the kids are home I don't have anything on generally unless of course we've got some extracurriculum stuff happening on the Saturday but um, we generally do a big clean up I go and do the weekly shopping and all that sort of stuff the girls babysit for me while I do that and then I come home and then I've got the afternoon and I generally sit up until 11 or 12 o'clock at night so I get a lot of stitching in done on the weekends and I generally set that down for finishes and all the rest of it. So January was a great month for finishing. I was able to use a lot of the um, smaller stuff that I had for challenges and stuff like that. I'm hoping that I'll be able to do that again um, this month as well. And um, so basically I, I sort of was a little bit washy all over the place where I was placing things and... Anybody that knows me knows that I'm, I am I like to organise and structure my days and, and whatnot so I can get the most crafting in, in a 24-hour period. So for those that are new here, I'm actually a quilter by day and I run my retreat and sewing business during the day and then at night to unwind, I do cross-stitch. Um, the last thing I want to do is make any patchwork blocks. I, I don't want to do any sort of sewing on the sewing machine or anything like that. So... Um, it's been really good for structuring all my cross stitching and what I want to get in and my focus pieces and all that sort of stuff. So for January, I wrote down everything that I, I had worked on when I was going to start it, but my extra credits were all over the place and I found myself scrambling at the end of the month. So I didn't want to do that again. So February, I've structured out a little bit more, but you can see here, I had written down everything that I wanted to work on. Obviously, um, some of these things do change. Um, due to homework and stuff like that so I'll move them around and for that reason I use a friction pen as opposed to a pencil that way I can just rub it out move it where I've got to move it and I just adjust it around the calendar but you can see there that I made a good go at everything I stitched every day I met my goal that was one of my goals this year was to stitch every day and I stitched every day in um, January you can see down here that there was a couple of new starts that I have written down the bottom new starts that I didn't end up starting they've been now moved to their charts that I just want to do they don't fit for homework or anything like that but they are just um, charts that I've I've got here that I want to do. I like them a little bit like that time to time one. I have no idea why I like them, but I just want to do them. Um, so they've now been moved to February and slotted in there. And um, if they work for homework, I always check to see if they're going to work for homework first. And if they do, then I'll just I'll put them in as homework. So at the end of the month, I know I've got another sheet here that I work on. So that was everything there. And you would have, if you want to see all that, just go back and look at all our videos. You'll see everything that I've worked on because I put it up in the video. Then I printed off another one. Um, and you can see there that I've divided the chart into um, stitches and time. Okay. So um, I write... Every day I'm stitching, I write down what my stitches are and then I've tallied them up at the end of the month. So for January, I done 15,272 stitches and that equates to 124 hours of stitching. Of course, um, I'm stitching approximately, and with that I'm stitching approximately 120 stitches an hour on average. So some days it's a little bit slower, some days it's a little bit faster. So that is an average on what I'm stitching a day. And I spend around, as I said, around two to three and a half hours. Um, and of course, I wasn't working during the day for these ones as well. But predominantly, these were all at night, except for the public holidays. So I was really surprised at how many stitches I put in. Like I knew I stitched a lot. But just allocating that two hours or two and a half hours or three hours a night, that adds up pretty quickly, like pretty quickly. And like I'm just looking overall, um, apart from weekends, which are a little bit abnormal um, because I've got more hours on Sunday. So my Sundays were very large numbers for a couple of them. So one of them I did 1,070 and the other one it was 1,068. Um, and then... 
there was two Sundays there that I did, um, one was just over 600 and one was just over 500. So, um, you know, like that, that's, a, a, and I've, I've got a Saturday there where I've done, um, 1,055 stitches. So, you know, like I've swapped it up. I've, you know, I had something on, on the Sunday, so I'd done my stitching, my big stitching on the, the Saturday. So while I try to get as much done, you know, and then on some Friday, on one Friday night, I did 810 stitches. Um, and that was six hours. I started at six and didn't go to bed until after midnight because I just wanted, that was a finish, that one. So, I was really, really surprised at how many hours that I had spent, 124 hours, um, but it was something that I really enjoyed. It didn't feel like 124 hours, um, and it definitely didn't feel like 15,000, over 15,000 stitches. So I'm going to be, it's going to be interesting to see what I do for February and if February is going to be the same. So far, um, I'm sort of just cruising along with it. As I said, I've, I've sort of restructured how I'm doing the calendar again. I've got the calendar um, and I've already written down um, what I want to do and I've ticked off what I've done. Um, so, and there's little notes underneath it, what I have to do on particular um, charts and all the rest of it. So as I said, extra credit come out. So now what I'm actually doing is I'm actually doing... Um, because I was scrambling a bit at the end of January, this month I've actually structured it a little bit more. All my extra credit stuff is done on a Tuesday. I've just put it down for them. So I know every Tuesday of the month I'm going to do 300 stitches or maybe more. Like last night I was just so enjoying that stitch that I ended up doing over 400 stitches. Um, and then when we get our homework, which generally comes out on the Sunday, I can slot that in. So here's my February... Um, calendar you can see there and um i'll insert a picture up a, a little bit um so you can get a closer view of it and so as i i said in january i'm just going to do my haids every sunday of course if i've got something on a sunday i'll swap that out for the saturday but i don't know whether i'm going to wholly and solely work on those so when i wake up in the morning to get stuck straight into a haid when you're sort of a little bit bleary eyed um not a real good thing to do so i've decided that i'm going to use my f focus pieces which i'm going to talk about in a moment um do a couple of hours on them in the morning um because i generally get up around six o'clock seven o'clock and then i have my coffee so while i'm having my morning coffee i'll get as many stitches in a minimum of 100 stitches so i will be doing at least 100 stitches on them um if i'm enjoying the stitch i'll keep going until about 9 30 and then um have a break see what the kids are up to and all the rest of it and then come out and do a really good session on my um haid and i want to do at least eight hours of stitching on my haid each sunday so that's what i've got down as my um goals and to what to do on my focus pieces and then as i said every tuesday i've got the um extra credit set down so i know that they're going to get done so i know when i get to that last week of february i'm only going to have my homework and one extra credit whereas last month i had homework and three extra credits to do um so i d i was scrambling a little bit so i thought i've got to restructure that a little bit better and then as you can see i've got here i've got some blank spaces here that's when so homework comes out so homework gets done um on monday uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and Fridays I've got that set down that way I can know that they're going to be done I don't have to stress that I'm getting to Sunday and I'm going to be scrambling to get that posted up I know that it's all and, and I was like this at school as well I used to do my homework on the bus on the way home so I didn't have to do it at home or I'd do it at school at lunchtime um, if I was sitting there and we were just all talking rubbish at the, the table, I'd bust out my math and just do my math homework or my English homework or, or whatever the case may be. And funny enough, I've actually passed that habit off onto, um, both of my kids. They just basically, I've never had to fight with them about homework because I've just said, it's just easier if you just get it done, then you don't have to stress about it. So, um, and I've pretty much used that tactic throughout my life with everything that I have to do with customers and all the rest of it I very rarely have customers waiting although I did take my six weeks off and I've only just got back into quilting since the 20th of um, December I took that time off because I really needed it 
Um, so yeah, and then I've put in um, for focus pieces this year. I am um, sorry, this month I have got three focus pieces. So I've got Halloween Quaker as a focus piece. So that will get slotted into as many challenges that I can get into. I've also got my Cruises Cottage, which I want to have finished by the end of the month. And little M has also been hassling me about the Hello Pumpkin one that she picked out last year for me to start for her. Every day, last week, every day this week and every day of the week before I have been asked have you finished my stitching have you got my stitching so I have made it a priority this month to slot that into as many homework pieces as I can and also to slot it in for my Sunday morning stitches so um Saturdays are set down for getting things finishes like finished so for instance, my Quilter's Cottage, that will be slotted in on Saturdays until it's finished. And then I've got it down. The last Monday of each month is to get a um, all my finishes done. So basically, um, if I've got two or three things that are so close to finishing, that Monday night, um, I will actually sit there and get them done. So um, that's what I've got them down for. So that is how I have structured my month this month. So next month in the first week of March, I will give you a rundown of how that all went and if it worked for me or whether I have to tweak it a little bit more. But so far, I'm liking it. I'm just looking at it. I'm not feeling, feeling overwhelmed or anything like that about it. Um, I'm also using the 24 hours of cross stitch weekly planner and recap so that basically what I do is when the homework comes out, I put down where I'm going to be stitching on it and then all I've got to do is just fill in the stitches. I'm still getting used to doing it because I missed a couple of the, the stitches on there. Um, so yeah, and then I just date uh, up the top so you can see here I've got it for Floss Tube 24 and the date that that is going to be when I'm going to record that and um, get that upload. Obviously it goes up a day later. Um, from when I record it but it's got everything on there I can talk about I put down little notes that I need to have on it so that's making it a lot easier and I think it gives gives the viewer you the viewer a better feel of what happens in my day-to-day -day life um with my stitching so it's um it's been quite funny uh like I've looked back at, at the calendar and all the rest of it and because I've had that six weeks off and I haven't really done much sewing and I haven't done much quilting a lot of people have been sending me emails and private messages and all that sort of stuff and asking me if I am actually leaving the um the quilting industry and moving into the cross stitch industry the answer is no I'm actually going to be doing both um, so some of you that view regularly know that I'm running retreats for quilting and bag making and general crafting and stuff like that up at the Bunya Mountains. Well, this year we're actually starting to do some cross-stitch ones as well. I'm doing behind the scenes as well as just learning about my cross-stitching. I'm emerging myself into, um, into anything to do with cross-stitch. So I'm reading all I can about it. I'm watching videos that I can watch about it, um, just general um, listening to floss tubers that are experienced that you know I've got a couple of hundred videos up or a hundred videos up um, and that have been stitching for many years so I'm, I'm absorbing all of that I'm absorbing all of the finishing techniques and stuff like that so I can um, run a couple of retreats up here and help people to finish their pr product um, their, their finished pieces and stuff like that because there are a lot of people that I've noticed out there, even on floss tube, that don't actually finish their their cross stitching pieces into fully finished objects. They finish them, uh, finish stitching them, but then they set them aside and don't actually do anything with them. So, my my goal this year is to learn as much as I as I can. I'm not moving away from quilting. Uh, I'm not starting up a separate channel. Is another question that I've been asked. Um, if I'm going to separate the two, I'm not going to do that. We are a multi-craft channel, so I'm just going to leave it all in one spot. Basically, if you don't like floss tube, it'll start with floss tube and what number it is. You can just skip that video. We're starting back this week for our Finish It Friday Live, so that will be a lot of quilty talk. Um, and Beck will be joining me for that one. 
Uh, we do have a little bit of an announcement on the floss tube. Beck has decided that she doesn't want to do floss tube anymore, and that's fine. Um, she was a little bit reluctant to do it in the beginning anyway, so I was happy to have her along for as many videos that we have. But she did say that she might pop in from time to time to say hi to everybody. She's just not going to be doing it on a weekly basis. Um, I feel that I, I'm, I feel a little bit saddened by that, but I can understand that it is a lot to get in front of a camera and it is a lot to do it each each week and it is you know it's if you're not someone that likes doing that sort of stuff it is a big leap of faith to get in front of a camera and do that so i can respect her decision on that um she'll still be around for finish it friday and in behind the scenes and doing retreats and all that she just decided that um she didn't want to do the floss tube um but as she said, she might pop in from time to time and just show you what she's been working on. She doesn't do as much stitching as me, but she's got three young kids, so that's fine. Um, she does other things and, and all that sort of stuff, whereas I'm at home because I've got to be available to pick up the kids from their extracurriculum activities and all that sort of stuff. So, um, And you know what? I, I just, I, rather than sit there and watching TV, I just sit here and stitch instead. So I can understand that. Um, that she's got she's busy and she's got other things to do so um, we've had a lot of questions about whether Beck was coming back or not uh, she only made the decision last week I think it was last Thursday or Friday I was talking to her as she made the decision then um, prior to that she was coming back she was just on holidays so for those that ask um, so yeah so uh, you might see her from time to time um, you will definitely see her on Fridays on our live she'll be joining us every week for that um, obviously if she's got to go to Rockhampton or something like that for um, near school holidays she won't be um, joining us in school holidays she's always had her um, days off in the school holidays she's never been part of the videos or anything like that we generally take a break um, on the finish at Fridays for that we have like um, four seasons essentially so each term school term here in Australia we have our finish at Fridays so they will be starting back up um, this week and so you'll start to see more quilting stuff popping up over on Instagram as well um, and on the Facebook page and over in the group we've got swaps and all sorts of stuff coming up in the next week or so I'll be putting up some um, more swaps and we're actually going to be looking at doing a cross stitch small swap so if that's something that you're interested in our facebook group link is down below and you can come over and join that we do have some criterias for you to meet such as taking photos progress photos and all that sort of stuff as well but you are more than welcome to come over and if you're a sewer and watching our floss tube we also have our bi-monthly um sewing swaps as well so we do things like zipper pouches and um this past swap that we did for january and february was a project bag so we actually got a combination of stitches and um sewers that joined it because they you can use it for um quilting or something or, or hand embroidery or anything like that so that's pretty much what's happening um with floss tube and the rest of the channel but we'll go over more detail of that in our finish it friday so now i'm going to move on to haul and uh cover what we got so normally i do uh an unboxing of the sassy pouch uh the sassy sassy pouch came in um yesterday so i'm i'm just going to do it here i've already undone everything i'm not going to go through the rigmarole sorry about the crinkling um rigmarole of unwrapping everything i've already done all that so that's, yep, that's everything out i'll just i love the pouch the pouch is just awesome bright purple pouch <laughs> it's awesome so i'm just going to go through some of the things that we got in the um the pouch as i said i wasn't going to go through the whole rigmarole of unwrapping it all because everything if you haven't seen it before go back i've actually done two unboxings where one with beck and one by myself where um i actually unwrap everything that we get so this week uh, this month we got it was australiana so it was the australia sassy pouch and the contents there was 14 things in it so we had an ought container or stubby holder so mine will be an ought container <laughs> because I don't drink beer <laughs> the next one was an aussie needle minder and 
mine actually didn't come it wasn't actually in there so i've got to send an email to the ladies and i forgot to do it last night because i opened this pretty late last night just before i got into bed so i've got to send them a message um that actually didn't come there's a cross stitch journal so this basically has got the sassy pouch tassy devils on the on the front sassy devils and it's just a blank um notepad so i can write in there what i'm working on i've already got one on the go at the moment and basically what i do it's like my brainstorming um journal so like and what i'm going to like writing down stitches if i'm working on a couple of different charts so you can just see there's just a bunch of scribbles so it'll get used in the same thing so i've got one of those uh, i've got a pen to go with it and oops and I got a pen to go with it, and basically that is an awesome pen to write with. I was writing with it last night. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a freak for um, stationery, especially when it comes to pens. And I'm a little bit obsessive about people using my pens, especially if they're a good pen. But that feels really nice in the hand. So that came, um, it just has their email address on it. Um, so if you need to contact them, so that came with that. So that'll sit with that. Um, we got, uh, the next thing that we got was a floss ring and that is, and that came with a little Aussie charm on it. So that's a, a, um, thong as we call them and it's got a floss ring. So I've got that, that'll come in handy. I've got, that'll come in handy for a couple of different ones. The next one is there's some thread drops to go onto the floss ring. So I think there's probably about 10 in there maybe a bit more so yeah they'll come in handy as well I love things that you can use um the next thing that we got was uh stranded cotton there's 10 meters of this and this is a um cottage garden threads and it is called billabong so look at the colors on that that is absolutely gorgeous so I'll have to find something I actually came across a chart this morning um that i think that that would look really good on so yeah i'm liking that i'm really liking working with the variegateds but yeah that's beautiful so there's that one next one was an exclusive color for um the sassy devils and this is a silks for you and we all know how i feel about silks for you um so this is this one here that's what's come this time um, that so I've got another one to add to my collection and these are for uh, this is exclusive for the um, sassy pouch so this one is called Aussie summer okay and there's 10 meters and I'm not too sure I'll have to double check and and see I'll let you know next week whether you can actually buy these um, exclusive colors or whether they're just for the sassy um, pouch customers but that is beautiful absolutely love it so there's that one uh the next thing we got was a pattern so this is little aussie parrots and it is a pattern by rachel james of fuzzy fox designs and she's got an etsy store and i'll leave it down below because you can actually um you can actually purchase this pattern on her um her website so um that's it there it's super cute i'm actually looking forward to to um stitching one, this one beck didn't get the pouch this time because i asked her yesterday if she got the pouch and if she wanted to do the unboxing with me um but she didn't get the pouch this time but i'm thinking that i'm actually going to share that with beck because her daughter would absolutely love that so i'm actually going to part i'm gonna pass the stash and give that to her I think it's cute, but I personally wouldn't um, stitch it. So, um, but I know that Beck would stitch that because she would stitch that for her um, eldest daughter, um, Talon, and she loves all things that birds. And if you've watched any of our floss tubes together, we've had conversations about chickens and all sorts of stuff because <laughs> she just loves farm animals and she loves birds and, and all the rest of it. And that would be cute because she also loves to read. Um, and I'm pretty sure she got the... Um, harry potter series for christmas from from beck so um yeah so that is super cute so if you like that sort of thing head over to her um etsy store and i'll put that link down below for you because you can actually purchase this pattern 
um, it was done back in 2016 so it's a not a new pattern but still super cute and it's it goes through um, it's got it's a little booklet and I can't show you the back because the patterns on the back um, but yeah she's got tips and tricks in there like she's got instructions um, these instructions don't teach you how to cross stitch if you're new please um, look for many videos excellent videos online um, on how to cross stitch but she um, gives you tips and tricks and um, she goes my Ada is very stiff and that's her preference so the edges don't fray while I'm working the design um, if you're a beginner you might find it easier to use a large account these are just little tips and tricks that she's got in this particular booklet that we've received. I don't know if that comes in all her patterns because I'd actually never heard of her until yesterday. Um, so yeah, and the diff and the it gives you whether it's a difficult pattern or an easy pattern. And this one is actually a competent beginner to an intermediate, and it only has um, whole stitches, um, a couple of French knots, and minimal back stitching. So it doesn't have too much back stitching. In fact, I can't even see any back stitching on it. Oh yeah, near the wings. Okay, so yeah, and it's only got four French knots. So for those that don't like French knots, it's all good. It's only got four. <laughs> um, it's got a fair few colours. Um, what have we got? Mainly because they look, a, they've got a lot of colours in them because you've got rainbow lorikeets and stuff like that. So, um, and yeah, she just goes on to um, give you. You know, like, be careful of your tension and all that sort of stuff. So that's a really good, like, if it, all her patterns come like that, that's pretty awesome because sometimes when you're a beginner, you, yeah, you go and look at those videos and you do all that beginner stuff, but then they don't cover things like the different types of fabric, why they choose those fabrics or anything. Like, and she said in there that, you know, her Ada is a little bit stiffer. She prefers that because it doesn't fray as much. I mean... Personally, I just run my fabric in through my sewing machine and do a zigzag with, I have a stitch that has a straight line and a zigzag, which is similar to what an overlocker is. I just don't have the four threads. It's just a single thread. All right. So that's the pattern. The next one is Pat Carson's favorite needles. And we've got three of those. So that's, um, that came in a little booklet and there's three of the needles in there. So they'll come in handy always do with more needles especially with the amount of whips I've got the next one is um, some goat's milk soap and it's in the shape of um, Tasmania it's got a little Tassie devil on the front and it's Catherine's goat milk soap and Manuka honey and this is handmade in Tasmania so they do try to in um, have stuff that is handmade in well they have so far my favorite one so far has been the fudge which I do have to get more of that um, they sent some eucalyptus cough, cough drops as well. We're coming into the um, into autumn, so people tend to get um, colds and flus and sore throats at the change of season. We've got another little piece of the puzzle for Tasmania. And then they, they always throw in a welcome letter as well and then facts about Australia. So because this was an Australian one, um, so did you know Tasmania has the cleanest air in the world? Did you know the, the Great Barrier Reef is the largest ecosystem in the world? And did you know that 80% of Australian animals are unique to our country and 90% of Australians live on the coast, on, on the coast? So whether that's Western Australia or um, like the West Coast or East Coast or the North or South Coast. So they 90% of Australians live on the coast. I knew it was up close to there. Um, and I knew the bit about the, the, I didn't know that Tasmania had the cleanest air. So I did learn something from this one this time. So that, that was um, very interesting. Like, yeah. And, but I would like to know why it has the cleanest air in the world. Because that's a, that's a, that's a huge claim right there on that so if someone can elaborate why they have the cleanest air i would love to know leave it in the comments down below and then my favorite part of um the pouch is the fabric now i was getting the normal size fabric and then they sent out an option to get a larger piece of fabric so i've got um gone for a fat quarter size um because i can do more with a fat quarter essentially Okay, so this one is a 20, 28 count even weave. 
it is hand dyed and it's called splice and i must say ladies the name suits it perfectly because when i opened it up before i even looked at the name of it i opened it up and went oh wow that looks like a splice because uh, that, that's actually one of my favorite summer ice creams I haven't had many as an adult but as a kid that's what I used to always get every afternoon when I was coming home from the Manly Beach in Sydney I would grab a splice ice cream because they're just like they're so nice they're like a vanilla ice creamy ice cream on the center and then they've got like a yellowy they come in yellow green and I think over the years they had other colors as well but they come in a yellow and a green um flavor and um with an ice on the outside of the vanilla ice cream on there in the center and they're really really nice so this i don't know if i'm going to get it oh, let's go back a little bit so this is the fat quarter um so you can see there that it's got some nice coloring in it um, i'm just trying to get the color it's looking a little bit dull on the camera i think oh, there we go just about there that's sort of the cut you can see the colors now so um the yellow looks dull on the camera it's a little bit brighter than what it's coming up that's probably the true color about there maybe but yeah i I'm, i've got a few ideas what i can use that for so that is absolutely gorgeous all right so that was everything that i got in the the sassy pouch and i was actually really happy with that um and we also get a little card with it as well, which I thought was super cute. You ain't me. <laughs> super cute. And that just says, this is a little thank you card. All right. So that's everything that I got for this time. And I'm looking forward to the next one as well. So we'll probably get a notification that they go on sale because they come out every second month. And I'm starting to, just from that alone, I'm starting to get a good, decent, um, stash of fabric as well i really liked last one the last one we got that was called bondi very very subtle yellow with some sandy colors in it um so i'm looking forward to doing something on that still haven't found the chart that's going to go on it but um i've got a few ideas for that um and then i ordered this at the end of last year and it went on back order because it wasn't available um i got it around the same time that i ordered the um good intentions one by kathy barrick and this one finally um, i got a notification the other day that it was dispatched and it came in yesterday as well and i absolutely love it so this is a by kathy barrick and it's called needlework and this is the chart so i've just got to get some fabric for that and um kit it out and i'll have that sitting there ready to go but this is probably going to get started sooner rather than later uh, no, I just absolutely love it. I think it's adorable. And there's a thing on the back of it, which is absolutely amazing. And I'm going to go on the hunt for one. Look at that. It's got all your threads on it, but it's also got little pockets, for, like little hole for your thimble and all the rest of it. I think that's, I don't know what it's called, but I'm going to go for a hunt for one. See if I can't buy one. Pretty cool. How's that? But yeah, I can't wait to start that one. So I'm going to probably do it on a sort of sandy color i like that color fabric in the background um i think this one was done on 36 count i will not be doing it on 36 count i will be doing it on um probably on 28 count i think will be what i'll do it on um that, that's my sort of favorite one to do but that is pretty much everything that i have got i've got a couple other things that are due to come in um one of them is the silks for you thread so i paid that last night so that should come in in the next couple of days and i should hear from nicole from journey of a stitcher about the next um hawk run hollow chart that i want to get off her which was halloween so she'll send that custom thing through soon enough and i'll pay for that so that's exciting but that is it for me today uh as i said if you're new here hit that subscribe button and especially if you're new here and you've lasted this long hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it and that way you won't miss out on any future posts don't forget to give us a thumbs up down below and if you are new leave us a comment and introduce yourself because i always love to get to know um, my subscribers and where you've come from how you found me that's always exciting to to know as well and for those that are returning subscribers thank you so much for coming back again and um 
sitting through this video with me i enjoy your company every week and i hope you got some stitches in but that's it from me today have a great week everybody and happy stitching and i'll see you all again next time bye for now